Hi, Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Okay, let's get started with our lecture seven today. Okay, before we start, uh, I just want you to refer to your ELIP for those who haven't checked the ELIP yet. Okay, um, actually yesterday I already uploaded uh, one extra note for the lecture seven. Actually, it's like uh, the important, the highlight of lecture seven, input and output module. So if you scroll down, you can see here, this is a PDF file, input and output. Okay, you can refer to the this uh what you call file okay takut ada yang tak tengok ah so everyone can hear me clearly right boleh dengar dengan jelas suara saya boleh yeah, boleh boleh dengar dengan I cannot speak more than one hour, otherwise I will get the sore throat back. Uh, okay, guys, okay. let me stop sharing this and share the lecture slide. Hang on a second, where's my lecture slide? Slides in. Okay. <clears throat> this one okay i will uh, stop uh, a video but just uh, you can focus on the, the slide huh? if mind the sharing okay so i can stop the video saya, so you don't have to see my face okay, okay. So for today, we're going to cover an input and output. In, when we're talking about the input and output, uh, of course, straight away, you think about the devices, right? You are going to be what we call it, mouse, speaker, keyboard, and etc. So basically, yeah, it is related. But when we talk about the component that made a computer a computer, remember that we have four main components. Okay, let's do some uh, revision, very quick one. As usual, so we have four main components, and you can, with these four main components, you can call it a, a machine, a computer. Ingat tak yang anak beruang ni kan? So you have the CPU, which is the processor. Then you have the main memory, or you can call it RAM or primary memory. Then you have input and output. Input and output here is not the device; it's a module or a program. Okay. So where is where is the device sitting? Okay, when the location here, so it's connected to this I/O module. Okay, they connected. So here the links to the peripheral devices. Ah, uh, peripheral lah, you're connected to your uh, computer. So remember, I think everyone already clear that these three main components are cannot communicate directly. So they need a medium. Okay, medium. So the other medium, medium apa ni kita panggil? Apa yang meng, meng, menghubungkan tiga-tiga ini, guys? What is the last component here? Good, it's a system bus, right? Yeah, you just ingat dia. In order for you to commit from one place to another place, you you be transported using a bus. The same way. What are they carry? They carry a data. They carry a signal, uh, which is a control line, and also carry the address. Uh, kan ada tiga kan? So dia ada tiga line kat sini. Okay, the control line, a control line which is a signal, read and write. Then you have a address. Then you have a uh, data. So they carry the data. So this how they communicate. They not communicate directly. So it must be via the system bus. Kan, okay, dikena melalui system bus. Okay, so far until today we have covered uh, CPU, how it work, what is function, how you operate. Then we already covered main memory. I think we have two lecture on memory and also. Before the raya break, we already covered system bus. So for today, the last component will be I, I, O, I, O, more module. So your peripheral will be here. It's not all the devices. Semua dah tahu kan apa devices kan? Device can be, uh, the peripheral devices can be break into two. Satu input, satu output. Uh, I think everyone knows lah what is an input device. Can you give me any example of input devices? Apa contoh input device? Yeah. Huh? Apa tadi? Tak dengar. Uh, keyboard kan? Keyboard. keyboard. What else? Mouse. Lagi? Uh, tertikus. Uh, Sama lah tertikus kan. Ni tablet that we can enter the, the data. Okay, microphone. 
Uh, what else, guys? What about the output? What is the output devices? Speaker kan yang produce the produce or display the the data. Data can be sound, can be graphic, can be video, a screen, kan? Uh, printer. What about scanner? Is that scanner input or output? Kan, scanner input, input kan? Is we scan the data in? Tapi dia boleh jadi output kan? Saya pun video <laughs> selalu pula. Nanti aku check. Okay, uh, okay again, let's focus to the I.O. module. So, this is the program. Okay, and then you have a peripheral. So, guys, uh, all together we have 61 slides. Okay, bear in mind, I'm not going through every single slide because I will try to make it as compact as possible, but I will try to cover all the slides by highlighting the important point as usual. Lah. So, nanti after the class, you must read again your slide. Okay, faham ha? So, I prefer this way. Okay, bila kita explain, dia lagi more clearer. Rather than I go one slide by slide. Okay, so kita akan tengok bahagian ni, I own more module. So you have many devices okay, connected to your computer. Okay, if you look at your laptop now, katakan you're using laptop or desktop, you can see you is connected with mouse, connected with keyboard, tablet, pen and etc. Speaker, webcam. So, so many type of peripheral devices that connected to your computer system at one time. So of course you need a module here. So it can become an interface between Peripheral dengan sistem bus. Jadi, jadi sebagai interface. One of the, one of its uh, function is to become an interface. Okay, between the peripheral devices and the system bus. Kenapa between system bus? Because system bus, you not communicate with CPU, they need system bus. It must be via system bus. They cannot communicate directly, no matter what. Okay, so it's become an interface. Why we need an interface? Kenapa perlukan interface ni? Satu, as now we are listed input and output, so different type of devices, meaning different type of format, kan? Format gambar, format text is berbeza, so different type of device, okay, different type, mean different format, okay, format lah, because it's different devices, okay, they are different devices, okay, different uh, peripheral. So what else? Uh, if a different format, the amount of data they carry is also the different. Tak, tak sama banyak, kan? Dia tak sama banyak. Also, the speed rate also different. Okay. The speed also different. The rate of the speed also different. So because the CPU, they want to, to when they want to get the data from the I.O., they, they get the data from the I.O. So remember the CPU is generally always faster than the I.O. Very parallel devices, or, and the magnitude is slower than CPU. So we need the interface to become, uh, to synchronize the communication between the bus, uh, between the I.O. and the CPU. Remember, function CPU to apa? And function here to fetch, kan? Okay, they, they can fetch data from the, okay. At this point, you we, we learn about CPU and memory, and you fetch data from memory, the process, and then they, they uh, put it back to memory or to I.O. So now, the CPU also can fetch from I.O. They can uh, fetch data from I.O. So the CPU always faster. Okay, peripheral ni banyak. So, different manufacturer, meaning different setting. So, the amount of data carry also different. The, how they operate is different at the, the speed rate also different. Kadang-kadang, your CPU is built uh, uh, macam lagi advanced from the I.O. Or maybe the I.O. is advanced, vice versa. So, you need the interface to balance this out. So, that communication can be syn synchronous. Ah, so, they're synchronous lah. Sebab dia berbeza, uh, dia macam ni, you ingat banyak peripheral, meaning different peripheral, different setting, different type, different format, different data. So, the transfer rate also different. The amount of data they carry at one time also different. So, you need a interface or a module to synchronize the communication between CPU and I.O. Because CPU always uh, generally faster than CPU. So, you want to balance it up. So, dalam I.O. ni akan ada buffer lah, ada data register. Okay, kalau you dah go through the slide, you akan nampak satu diagram. So, all the data from the peripheral ni akan dimasukkan ke dalam register dulu before it fetch by the C CPU. Ah, baru dia ambil. When they ready lah, dia akan ambil. Ah, dia macam kita bakul. Dia, ya, saya, saya pernah explain perasaan buffer. Buffer is like something to hold. Kan, for oh, data register to hold data temporarily. So, dia akan fill in dulu. Katakan ni peripheral device, any type of device lah. So, dia akan data akan masuk dalam ni dulu. When it's ready, the CPU will fetch it from here. 
sebab usually peripheral ni dia slower than CPU. So to make it more efficient, so fill in the buffer first. When it ready, we we'll send the status send the, uh, status signal to CPU, then CPU will fetch the the data from the I/O. So setiap ni ada akan ada di punya block diagram. Let's on and show you. Katakan ini uh, ni mouse, what else tablet, pen. So di sini lah, di sini akan ada buffer. Okay, so far do you guys understand what we're going to learn today? Boleh, boleh dapat tak the bigger picture now? Uh, habis dah, uh, habis dah lecture. <laughs> ni dia punya intipati ya. Uh, intipati dia ni sahaja sebenarnya. So, maksudnya if you can understand the first concept. Sebab itulah dalam setiap kelas, I really want my, my student to understand the concept first. Okay, you kena fahamkan konsep. Saya kena buka uh, video lah rasa macam tak seorang pula. Okay, sekejap lah. So, okay. First, kita dah belajar CPU, memory and then you know the, okay, let's do some revision, one minute revision. Either you know the function of the processor is to process what are they processing, they're processing the in instruction kan, they can process instruction, so they will decode the instruction and they will do whatever the instruction instruct them to to do. So I'm not going to touch apa dalam CPU lah, dah belajar kan. So kat mana dia dapat instruction ni kan, where the CPU fetch the instruction from, kat mana? Any revision? From where? Where they get the instruction from? Eh, hey, tak ada jawab ke? Kena lupa awak ni ada way. Ah, Veronica kat mana? Where the CPU get the instruction from? Anyone? Ah, anyone? Rebecca, daripada mana? <coughs> ya Allah, I don't remember. Sedih saya. Hah, nak menangis pula saya rasa. So, CPU. The cycle of the CPU kan? CPU. Dia punya cycle apa? Dia fetch. To hop kan? For instruction to be fetched, there will be both inside. Alright. So where they fetch this information of oh, this from the main memory? They tak ada main memory lah. Sebab itulah setiap lecture, you kena faham apa function setiap component. Then you'll be able to uh, understand. Okay. So dalam memory ni, every program, every job, every data must be loaded into main memory. Dia mesti masuk dalam main memory dulu. Dia tak, dia tak boleh pergi tempat lain. Macam otak kita lah, we hold the data. How you want to process something? By the information that inside your brain. Your brain is your memory. Ah, kan? Dia kena load dalam memory baru you boleh berfikir using the data. Same goes the CPU. CPU, function dia tu uh, A Rebecca O pula awak. Kita dah belajar lah benda ni. Saya tak marah. Cuma janganlah lupa. Benda ni sangat basic kan guys. This is very basic. Kan? CPU ni, you have, betul lah you kena lihat dia fetch, dia execute. Where they fetching the information from? When I say the information, it can be instruction, can be data and etc. So to, to to short, I call it information lah. So we will fetch from the main memory, kan? Semua kena load dalam memory. The moment you turn on your computer, everything will be loaded into memory, including the operating system or all necessary uh, uh, program to boot your computer, okay? So, so dalam memory, everything will be uh, placed in addressable location. Ingat tak yang ni? Uh, yang saya, saya bagi contoh, uh, apa? Uh, college banyak-banyak tingkat tu, setiap tingkat ada orang, ada ada location. So, it be addressable location. So, each of this, uh, we view is like this. Uh, kita punya user view. So, we start with zero until and n is the, the, apa kata, the, the end size of your RAM. Okay, but in game besar, makin besar lah dia punya line ni. So, in each of this line, akan di load instruction ke job ke data dan sebagainya. Okay, the CPU will fetch it from here. How is fetch? They must know the address. Ah, sebab tu dah dalam sistem bus ni ada address, ada control, ada signal. I saw that ada address, control dengan data. Ah, dia ulang-ulang tu je. So, I give the metaphor of grab uh, driver dengan food panda ataupun grab food kan. If they want to fetch you, katakan using the uh, apps grab driver, you not go to the airport. How the grab driver know where you are? Macam mana dia tahu kat mana awak? How, how they know where you are? Based on what? Saya nak ambil awak, ha, macam mana? 
from the address send goes to the CPU. They want to fetch the instruction. They must know the address. Sebab tu dah dalam ni kita dah belajar all the PC counter instruction register internal part of the CPU ni we already covered. Okay, I already explained. So dia akan rujuk dekat uh, instruction register. Where is register is register dah to hold the address. So dia akan pergilah dekat this location. When they, they found it, let's say the data is here. Contoh lah, dia dekat sini. So dia they, they will, they will fetch, dia ambil. At this stage, it doesn't care what type of information. It can be instruction, it can be data, dan or it can be operand dan sebagainya. So, they will bring it back to CPU. Dia akan bawa masuk ke dalam. When they fetch, kan dia execute kan? Dia ambil dulu, dia bring it back to CPU. So, the here is a, many internal component of the CPU. Uh, ni you kena baca, do the revision. Ada PC, ada uh, IR kalau saya buat revision, uh, tak siap hari ni. So, dia akan uh, decode, dia akan translate, okay, what this instruction is all about. So, you go to back to the our lecture yang ada contoh 3 plus 2 tu. Ingat tak yang kita buat 3 tambah 2 tu? Jadi 5. Lepas tu ada store, ada accumulator dan sebagainya. So, that, that's how it's work. Okay. When they're fetching, they must through the system bus. So, bila they fetch, they ada address, data akan masuk dalam line data. Control akan masuk dalam line control, dia akan asing-asing line. So for data, it contain the data itself, the address will contain the address. Okay, dia nak ke mana kan? So the con the control is uh, contain the control signal lah, read or write. Read or write. Read, you, you just just ambil. Write, you put, you write the new data in. Ah, so here, uh, ni adalah function CPU. Function memory is to hold the program data dan sebagainya. So now kita belajar I.O. I.O. is a module, again, again, it's an interface between uh, the CPU. You can ingat lah, CPU ni adalah the, dia adalah the the brand, kan ni the brand of the computer, so they manage everything. They manage the communication between all these component. Uh, so, dia kena melalui uh, CPU. Katakan I.O. ni nak hantar data ke memory, dia CPU yang akan manage the transfer. Okay, they manage the transfer of the system bus ni menggunakan system bus. It's no direct communication lah. So, yeah. Basically, kenapa ada module? Because we have many type of peripheral. Peripheral is a devices lah that connected to your computer. It can be input or it can be get output devices. So, because you have many type of devices, so meaning is a different type, different setting, different format. Also, the amount of data they carry at one time is not the same. Okay? And also, the speed is different. Generally, the CPU speed is always faster than I.O. So, to synchronize, to balance the communication between I.O. dengan CPU, so we need I.O. module. Dalam I.O. module, there's a buffer or register. So, all the data will be filled in into this buffer first from any of the device that they want to, that they, they need to read the data from. Katakan CPU, they need to read data from I.O. 1. Uh, dia akan rujuk sini dan dia akan masuk dulu. I.O. 1 akan di fill in into the buffer. When it's ready, the I.O. will notify. Dia akan bagi uh, signal. Okay, it's ready, you can collect the data. So, CPU will get the, 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 the data from the any of this I.O. from this buffer. Not directly, eh? bukan directly. Dia akan diisi dalam buffer dulu. Because what? Because of this reason. Okay. Via the system. Jangan lupa, dia kena lalu system bus. So, system bus ada tiga line. Address the system. So, dia macam ni. Okay, yang ini clear semua. Boleh ha? Semua dah clear? Kalau clear, saya akan proceed. Okay, boleh. Okay, thank you Rebecca. Uh, so, you kena fahamkan apa function CPU, apa function memory, apa function I.O. Then it's easier to follow. Senang je. Okay. Okay, let's moving on. Okay, I will, okay, uh, bear in mind I will skip some of the the slide. Sebab yang yang saya skip tu yang you boleh baca sendiri. Macam type of uh, input and output kita dah dah, dah discuss. Okay, also the, the the thing that I already discussed, I will skip. Huh? Okay. Yang ni tak yalah. Ini pun dah discuss masa bentar tadi. Ini pun sama. Ini tadilah yang kita baru uh, Okay, ya ini is the learning objective of today. So, what is I.O. problem? Yang ni saya baru, uh, kita baru discuss. Because different, uh, many different type of peripheral, different setting, format, type, amount and speed. Okay. Categories, you know lah, you have the input and output, sync, sync devices, uh, source devices. Uh, now, it's just a different name. Okay. Our uh, channels, uh, okay, our channel is uh, nanti lah. Okay, our uh, module function, what is the function of our module? Ini pun baru discuss tadi, apa function dia? To synchronize, to control the timing, can be communication between I.O. dengan CPU. Kenapa dia communicate dengan CPU? Sebab CPU yang manage 
of the communication between these three main component. Uh, dia kena CPCB adalah brain, uh, dia yang manage. Okay, so the two main areas of IO module, okay, what are the strategy? Okay, yang ini kita akan belajar lah, strategy, there's a three different type of strategy. Strategi apa ni? Pokok uh, modul communicate with the CPU. Ada tiga cara lah, ada tiga method. It will cover uh, uh, on this lecture. Okay. Lagi satu adalah interface between I/O module and the devices connected. Ini kita dah explain just now. Yang ni dah. Nama ni kan? Ini dah, yang ni dah, yang ni dah, yang ni dah. Sebab so, our main focus actually this one. Just to main focus lah. First you must understand what is I/O module. What, what are their important? What are their function? Then uh, there is to communicate between CPU dengan I/O. Okay, so the three methods or three different way for I/O module to communicate with the CPU. We're going to look one by one. Okay, if I'm going to pass, uh, let me know. Ah, uh, ni dah lah. Dah dah explain. Ah, uh, ni tadi semua. Okay, in words, kalau in proper wording, you refer to the lecture notes. Sama saja. Yeah, ni slower. Okay, I already explained here. Hmm, ni pun sama just gambaran lah contoh-contoh gambar yang ni tak penting, kan, tak penting. You, you tahu lah kan ni contoh input and output device kat mana sekiranya tadi guys kita tak ada dalam ni <coughs> I think scanner is uh, input kan yeah? sebab we, we scan the images yeah I think it's, yeah, scanner betul-betul siapa jawab input tadi betul scanner is a uh, Apa, apa, apa panggil? Input, input devices. Okay. Yang kerja eh? Ni apa ni? Tak ada apa dah. Translucer is just to convert the electrical, uh, physical electrical into the data. To handle the electrical signal lah. Okay, yang ini yang kita akan belajar hari ni. Yang ni, ni is the I.O. strategies. We have program I.O. We have interrupt driven I/O. Then last but not least, we have direct memory access, which is DMA. Okay, and this is communication between CPU and memory, but must be via system bus. Kena via system bus. Tak ada direct communication ya. Okay, I think I will just straight forward to the. Ini pun sama dah kita dah explain. Di gambar yang lebih jelas, you refer lah yang saya contohin tu tak kacanti lah kan. Human readable, ini boleh. Okay, this is a, a block diagram for each of your device. Untuk peripheral device, macam ni lah kita punya block diagram. Kita ada control logic. Ini mana gambar saya? Okay, you can see from uh, slide number 18 guys. So the control signal from I mode D ini adalah peripheral device. Kau bayangkanlah maybe ini your maybe your keyboard. Okay, it can be keyboard, it can be mouse, it can be tablet pen, anything. Eh? So control signal from I O module. Okay, status signal to I O module. So ini adalah pemisahan I O module. Okay, then the data bit. Okay, the data bit. Okay. For the status tu, dia akan send kepada CPU. Ingat dia nak communicate, communicate dengan si CPU. Eh? So, this is the, the block diagram. Dia punya gambar lebih besar sebenarnya macam ni. Okay, okay. Uh, nanti we go back to uh, slide number 18. Saya rasa you better go to this slide first. Ah, ni. Ini slide, pergi slide number 22 guys. You see the slide number 22 ni. Yang tu external device interface logic ni. Yang ni kan, yang ni, yang ini. Yang ini adalah yang slide 18 ni. Yang ini, ah, yang ini. Okay, yang ini. Faham tak maksud saya? Dalam I.O. module ada dia punya diagram. Okay, part of the I.O. module is the diagram of device. So status signal to I/O module dia akan sekat okay, I'm ready to I'm busy I'm ready to uh, apa transfer the data okay control signal from I/O module <coughs> control signal tu maksudnya to read and to write okay to read and to write okay data dia carry data data dia carry data uh, dia kena ada separate line kalau dia ready dia 
I can, I can, I'm, I'm ready to, to, to transfer the data to the CPU. Ataupun CPU yang request, I want the data from this uh, particular I.O. I.O. nombor satu, I.O. nombor dua macam tu. So, dia akan uh, keep the status, okay, ready to transfer. Okay, then uh, signal ni maksudnya read dengan write. So, bila dia ready to transfer, maksudnya dia akan write. Okay, okay data to carry the data that want to transfer. Okay. Ini yeah, electrical uh, convention and it buffer dekat sini to to buffer atau to hold the data. Okay, if we go to slide, uh, dalam ni ada, uh, oh, the function ni sama juga, eh? control and timing, the, uh, go here. Uh, ini tadi ni guys, dalam ni ada dia punya, you go to slide number, number berapa entah tadi, 18. Okay, patch 18. Right, so here. Ini adalah I.O. modul yang uh, ni yeah, ni anak ikus ni. So this I.O. Okay, this is the diagram. Uh, again, ni CPU, ni main, memory. Ni pas. Uh, ni dia punya uh, diagram lah. Dia punya diagram. So the doctor, sister, dia nampak kata ni sister to hold the data from the web. Dari mana-mana dia dapat data ni. Daripada ni lah yang ni tadi. Okay. Sebab dia banyak uh, I.O. tu. So Dia nampak ada titik-titik yang mewakili beberapa I.O. A number of I.O. devices, peripheral devices, okay? Dalam gambar ni dia bagi dua sahaja. Okay, and then the address line, the control line, the control line to read, to write. Okay, this interface to the system bus to communicate to the uh, CPU. Ini lah. Faham tak? Dia sama je dengan yang lain. Data address control ni. Faham tak? Dekat sini tak ada address lah sebab yang address akan di manage oleh I.O. module. Okay. So the CPU will okay, I need to get the data from I.O. 1. So dia akan tahu lah kat mana dia nak dapatkan. So dia kena buffer dulu sebab apa kena buffer tadi lah sebab the speed is not the same. The amount of data the same. The setting the same. Kan dia kena buat I.O. logic dulu conversion dan sebagainya. Okay. Ini adalah dia punya. Ini to the system bus. Ini to the peripheral devices. Boleh I own model decision, dia akan, uh, it can support multiple or single device. Now it's multiple device, jarang yang support single device only. Okay, uh, hide or reveal device property to the CPU. Okay, dia akan control. Uh, okay, hari ni kita, okay, now moving on to this part. It's a very important part. Tadi pun important to understand the function, uh, how, why we need I own module, kan? Kenapa kita kena ada I own module. And then, so now it's the, Input or output technique or strategies untuk apa? Untuk communication between how CPU communicate with um, I.O. module. No? Kita panggil I.O. je. Bila saya panggil I.O. ni is I.O. module biasa jangan fikir peripheral devices. Okay? okay. How they communicate. So ada tiga cara. There's three strategies of how CPU communicate with I, I.O. Okay, let's look at the first strategy. We call it program I.O. Program I.O ni apa? Program I.O ni simple. Dia sangat simple. Okay, the simplest strategy for handling communication between CPU and I.O module is program I.O. Using this strategy, CPU is responsible for all communication with I.O. They take over all the uh, control by executing instruction with control and the attached devices or transfer the data. For example, CPU wanted to send data to device using program I.O. Katakan dia nak send data to any device, can, can be any, any device lah. It will first issue an instruction to the appropriate I.O. module. Dia kena ingat lah sebab CPU ni dia communicate dengan I.O. module. Ni uh, CPU, okay, ni sistem bus lah ya. Sistem bus, so all the devices connected to I.O. module kat sini. So, dia banyak devices, the peripheral devices. Katakan CPU, oh I want to get the data, I want to read the data from uh, any device, okay, any device. So, they can issue the instruction. Okay, I want to read, read, read to the instruction here. To the appropriate, I am order to tell is expect data, the CPU must then, tapi dia kena tunggu. After they send the, the signal, then they have to wait. Uh, they wait for the CPU, I'm sorry, they wait for the I.O. So wait until the model respond before sending the data. So I only akan jalan saya kerja dia akan okay, dia will notify the end device okay, we need data from you. So then start the transfer fill in the buffer, the data. When the data is ready, it will notify the CPU. So CPU must wait until the module, module here is I.O. 
respond before sending the data. If the module is lower than CPU, which is generally yes, the CPU may also have to wait until the transfer is complete. Can be very inefficient. Why is it inefficient? Because this has to wait. While waiting, it cannot do any other tasks, any other work. Ingat tak, kita nak CPU kita be very efficient, work all the, all the time, kan? But using the program I.O., oh, this is the earlier uh, program lah. Dia have to wait. Uh, tunggu kat situ kan sampai ready. Uh, dia tak ada notification pun kata, okay, tunggu lima minit. Tak ada, they have to wait. When it's ready, then they will get the data. Uh, itu adalah program I.O. Oh. Beza dia dengan interrupt tu saja. Okay, do you guys get it? Dulu kan macam kita hantar surat, tak ada tracker tak macam sekarang like postal tracker. So you know where your parcel is. Nah, kan? Dulu tak ada. Dia kata dua atau tiga minggu itu tunggulah. Now you know where is it. Uh, sama lah dengan ni. So program I.O. when they send the request, I need to read the data. So they will need to wait for the I.O. to respond. Okay, when the data is ready, then you can get the data. So while waiting, they cannot do anything. So they have to wait. Uh, okay. Ataupun they need to do the periodically, periodically checking on the status. So dia kena check sentiasa, status, eh dah ke? Dah ke? Dah ke? Macam tu kan? Macam you nak masuk toilet, kat asyik ketuk pintu, dah ke? Dah ke? Dah ke? You have to consistently checking. So it's a waste of what? Waste of energy kan? It's not efficient. Okay, another problem is if the CPU must read data from device as a keyboard, Every so often, the CPU must issue an instruction to appropriate a module to see if any key have been pressed. So, so, maksudnya apa kat sini? Continuously checking. Is there any input? Is there any input? Is there any input? So, it's not efficient. Dia dia tak efficient because they continue checking. Satu lagi, dia kena tunggu. Ia ni kena tertiasa check. Uh, okay? Whether this uh, data is ready or not. Okay? okay. This is also extremely inefficient. Consequently, this circuit is only used in a very small microprocessor control device. So, yeah, the single program is uh, senang lah. Microprocessor yang kecil, okay lah. Okay. Basically, it's not the it's not efficient lah. Sebab your CPU is not working at a time, so it's always uh, uh, wasting its time for waiting for the data and also to continuously checking whether the data is ready or not. Hmm. So, kita panggil dia CPU waiting time. Wastage of CPU waiting time. But while waiting, they cannot do anything. So it's not eh, efficient. Ah, uh, contohnya program I/O. And then, how it works sama je lah. Ah, uh, ni tadi yang saya telah explain. They request I/O operation, I/O module perform operation. They request to read or write lah. So they akan perform, they akan set the status bit. Status tu ready ke busy ke? Oh, you need to wait. Okay. So, dia akan check status periodically. Dia kena sentiasa cek dah ready ke belum, dah ready ke belum. Okay, IO model does not inform directly. Tak akan inform directly, you have to wait. Dah ready baru you tahu. IO model does not interrupt the CPU. So, may wait or come back later. So, dia kena tunggu. Dia tak akan bagi tahu kalau dah ready, dia tak akan bagi tahu. Kalau dia dah dah cukup, dah penuh, uh, CPU kena kena check. Oh, dah ready ya, baru dia ambil. Because there's no interrupt. Uh, contohnya saya isikan uh, air dalam uh, baldi, air dah penuh saya tak bagi tahu awak pun you have to come back and check or you have to wait. So CPU need to wait. Uh, kan dia dah request, uh, I all dah ambil maklum, I all start filling in the data into the buffer. When it's uh, food, kata-kata uh, buffer tu dah complete, and it does not tell uh, CPU directly. So CPU need to check, oh dah ready, baru dia ambil ataupun dia wait. Kalau dia check uh, periodically ni, maybe dia akan set masa lah. Every 5 second, every 10 second. Uh, okay. So it's not, still not efficient. Okay. Because there's no interrupt handler. Tak ada interrupt. Uh, ingat tak eh, kita belajar interrupt tu. Uh, yang ni berkaitan. Okay. Ni tak ada interrupt. Kalau dah buffer tu dah penuh dengan data dia yang dia nak tu, the CPU must check ataupun tunggu. Uh, Bila dia request, dia terus tunggu. Tunggu maybe for 5 second, 10 second. I don't know lah, different on the setting. Kalau dia check pun every 5 second ke every 3 second. So both are not efficient. Okay, dia jadi wasters of CPU waiting time. They lead to wasters of CPU waiting time. Okay guys, is it clear now? Clear, kita akan move to the second strategies. Okay, thank you.
So, kena itu baca lah yang saya skip tu. Yang ni sama je lah addressing dia. Sebab dia ada dua kan. Dia ada command is the read or write command. Addressing to carry which I uh, wish uh, input and output device. Okay. So, uh, ni yang kita dah belajar ni mapping the memory map. Sama konsep dengan memory mapping yang kita dah belajar sebelum ni. You just read it again and just apply to different uh, component. Okay, now is the interrupt driven I.O. Interrupt driven I.O. If I know mistaken in our lecture 3, kita dah uh, uh, discuss panjang lebar pasal interrupt program. Kan ada long I.O. wait, short I.O. wait. So the interrupt, interrupt driven I.O. basically is to overcome the the problem of CPU waiting time dalam first strategy tadi. So a common strategy is to use interrupt driven. So maksudnya ada interrupt handler. This strategy allow the CPU to carry on it on with its other operation until the module is ready to transfer the data. Maksudnya, they request the data, the data is not ready yet, so they can uh, do other work, okay. Dia, dia boleh buat kerja lain, dia tak payah tunggu dan tak payah check pun. Sebab ada interrupt handler, okay. When the CPU want to communicate with the device, it issue an instruction. Sama juga, dia kena issue instruction to the appropriate IO module, whether they want to read or write. And then continue with other operation, okay, whatever operation they are tengah dealing with. When the device is ready, katakan dah ready, maksudnya ready to transfer the data, it will interrupt the CPU. The, the I.O. module that interrupt the CPU tu sebenarnya, it will interrupt the CPU. The CPU can can, can then carry out the data transfer as before. It interrupt. Bila dia interrupt, CPU akan stop what they're doing. They akan set the current uh, the current state tu, then they akan get the, the data from the I.O. So, dia tak payah menunggu, dia tak payah check the status of the I.O. Uh, so, it's more efficient kan? It's more efficient. Okay, this is also remove the need for the CPU to continually pull input devices to see if must read any data. Okay, when an input device has data, then the appropriate I.O. module can interrupt CPU to request a data transfer. Uh, first, dia is to an instruction, they need to read or write to this particular I.O. So, lepas tu dia akan carry on with the own operation. While the I.O. is ready, they will send the signal. Signal apa? Interrupt signal. Then they will go uh, get the the data. Okay, then the data transfer will occur. Uh, tu je intipati dia. Beza dia dengan program I.O. adalah interrupt, ada interrupt signal, ada interrupt handler. So, tak ada no more waiting time. So, it's more efficient. Faham tak? Senang kan? Clear guys? Is it clear for you guys? Yeah, so far clear. Thank you. Okay, yang ni ada dalam lecture. I cannot remember which lecture. Tapi the before the raya, we already remember that we talk about interrupt. Yeah, dia ada overlapping uh, note dalam ni. So, you can refer back to your like, uh, apa, previous lecture note lah. Dia ada overlapping lah. Eh? Ini tadi lah contoh-contoh yang kita discuss just now. I.O. module interrupt the CPU. CPU finish executing the current instruction. Acknowledge the interrupt. Step is current step. Maksudnya kan dia tengah buat another job. So, dia will stop. Katakan job tu. So, dia akan set kat mana dia berhenti. Dia katakan uh, dekat plus one contoh. CPU will jump to sequence of instruction which will handle the interrupt to do the data transfer. When 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 they're done, we will go back to this job. Okay, kena interrupt. Macam awak kena interrupt tengah makan, kena interrupt kan? Tunggu jap, so you will, will stop eating, right? After you done talking, with, then you continue eat, eating. Itu maksudnya interrupt. Okay. Stop you from your current activity. Then after that, you can re resume. Uh, sama juga, eh? Ya, yeah, CPU read command, do other work, check for interrupt and issue on instruction. Okay. If interrupted, set context, dekat register, proceed. Okay. Ini ada dekat previous lecture. Okay, clear kan guys lah? Okay, sama je lah, tak ada apa ni. Different line for each module. You can have more than one, uh, apa nama? Interrupt line. Okay, kita boleh buat software pun. CPU is uh, as each module. Turn, but it's slow. Dia boleh, dia boleh random lah. Okay, I nak tanya randomly asking, okay, end device ready ke tak? I device ready ke tak? Tapi so this is so slow. Okay. Yang punya. 
Ni baca sendiri ya, ada dan because we already discussed it in our previous lecture. Okay, but maybe ada dan lupa-lupa tu, you go back to our previous lecture. I cannot remember which, which, which lecture. You check again, I think if not mistaken, it's either three or four. It's three or four. Tiga atau tiga atau empat. Ini three or four lah, memory tu. Ini contoh, ni contoh intro handler dalam bentuk uh, gambar rajah macam ni. Nanti later on you can uh, analyze this. What nama? Images. Something lah. Ini kalau you have, you can, we can have more than one interrupt line. Ini pun ada contoh di tu. Okay, now we move on to the, the third uh, method or the third strategy of how CPU uh, communicate with I.O. Okay, the first two, the first two, the CPU, uh, dia, the first two ni, CPU dia ada 100% control over the system bus. Kan, dia ada 100% uh, control over the system bus. Okay, so what is direct memory access? Okay, direct memory access, DFA, the, the name itself already give way what is a uh, function okay it can uh, directly communicate to memory without the intervention of cpu without the environment of the cpu okay contohnya kita ada ni main memory it is your cpu and it is io when io want to communicate with main memory dia macam ni tau, dia kena ada involvement from the CPU. Jadi macam ni. Not communicate. Uh, walaupun dia communicate macam ni, tapi I, CPU will handle the the transfer of data. Dia kena lalu CPU juga. Dia kena lalu CPU. No matter what, it must through the CPU. Okay, dia kena lalu dengan CPU. Mana gambar? Uh, dia kena lalu si. So, there are two cycles lah. Memory transfer to CPU, CPU then transfer to I.O. There's two cycles involved. Ada dua cycle yang involved lah. Which is including fresh dengan di pun. So, dia akan lalu kat sini and masuk kat sini. So, ni satu cycle lah. Kita panggil satu cycle lah. Ni second cycle. So, the first two, uh, CPU yang control over the system bus. When they want to communicate uh, to main memory. So, now with the direct memory access, direct memory access. Maksudnya, the input and output uh, module can communicate directly to the main memory. But how? By using this extra device. Ini adalah uh, device. Uh, it's a hardware. It's a cable. Okay. So the cable is be here. Saya gambar saya. Saya dulu lukis tadi. So ada DMA. Okay. Dalam ni ada gambar ni. Tuan Asyur. Okay. So it become more efficient. So Maksudnya DMA ni, because with the first two, CPU akan control over the system bus, okay, for the communication between I.O. and memory. So now DMA by using the DMA to become is more efficient, dia akan take over the system bus from C CPU. Dia akan take over the system bus from the CPU. So the CPU doesn't have to involve. So CPU can do other work. So become more efficient. Ha. Okay, this will be admission is a large quantity of data available between the community. Okay, the transfer will be slower than necessary and the tak ada apa lah. Okay, many system therefore an additional strategy, okay, for is to become more faster. Okay, to become more efficient. Ini lah. Kita tak gambar. Okay, they use an additional piece of hardware which is called DMA controller. Okay, the MA controller can take over the system bus and transfer data between the module and memory without the intervention of the CPU. Okay, whenever the CPU wants to transfer data, it tells the DMA controller the direction of the of the transfer. The IO module involved the location of data in memory and the source of block data to be transferred. Okay. It can then continue with other instruction on the DMA control will will interrupt it when the transfer is complete. Maksudnya dia akan serahkan tugas kepada um, DMA. Okay. Initially, the CPU is the master. Yang the first two the CPU is the master. When it's hand over the control of the system bus to DMA, now the DMA controller at first becomes slave then. Right? Bila dia hand over the the control over the system bus, the CPU will become slave, the MA will become master sebab dia yang control the system bus. Okay, then CPU can do other work. So, it's more efficient. 
Okay, the CPU will only uh, give the information. Okay, you need to send this data to 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 this address. Okay, the a controller will do it. Okay, they are can manage function they to manage the transferring of the data from I/O kepada main memory. Uh, the system bus to. Faham tak? Faham tak guys? Before I give the more details, do you understand uh, so far? Apa DMA tu? I need someone to give feedback. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Uh, this is now the first two CPU yang in charge or take uh, handle the system bus okay, to do the transferring. So then DMA with the DMA controller is a piece of hardware which is connect to the uh, system bus to. So they can hand over the apa, tugasan. Uh, they can bagi system bus to the DMA. So DMA will take over the system bus. So they become a master. The CPU become a slave. Then the CPU can do other work. So it's more efficient. So dia hanya bagi uh, the information. Okay, you need to send this data to here and there. Uh, macam tu saja. Function dia sama je nanti dia akan do the transfer of data. Okay. Hmm. Dia macam ni. How dia uh, ni saya lukis kejap. Okay. Let's say you have I.O. Uh, uh, katakan here kita ada peripheral which is the devices. Huh? The peripheral, okay. Uh, the peripheral main memory directly. Okay, let's say the peripheral wanted to access main memory directly. Maksudnya, they need to write data to the main memory or memory need to uh, have to get data from the peripheral and vice versa. So, they can uh, send the request to the, the, sebab kita nak jadikan DMA ni sebagai master. Okay, at first, D is the master. D is the slab. So, maksudnya dia yang handle the system bus. Okay, now we have extra hardware which is, uh, you install the DMA controller. D is the DMA controller, guys. So the peripheral will send the request, okay? Uh, dia kata, I want to access the main memory directly without the involvement of the CPU for faster communication, okay? Uh, uh, and guys, that means the design by Intel, huh? Okay, what, how, how it's operate? The device wants to send data to memory. First device has to send DMA request. They can send DMA request. DMA request. They can send DMA request. Okay, dia akan send the DMA request, okay. Lepas dia hantar DMA request ni uh, to the DMA controller, the DMA controller will send the whole request to whole request of uh, the whole request to CPU. Uh, hold on. So that, apa maksud whole request? So that CPU can hold. Uh, maksudnya dia hold apa dia tak akan all from the control over the system bus. So the CPU can uh, acknowledge this request. They can, okay, I will acknowledge this request. They can acknowledge the request, hash L uh, A Q. They will acknowledge, okay, they will, uh, they will acknowledge. Okay, maksudnya bila they acknowledge the request, they will become a slave. So they will become a master. So dia dapat, sekarang CPU dia punya state adalah whole. Whole from what? Whole from uh, control over the system bus. So dia dah acknowledge. So, bila dia acknowledge meaning dia akan pass over, hand over the system bus to DMA controller. So dia akan hand over uh, the, uh, the system bus to the DMA controller. And the CPU then bila dia dalam whole state, dia tak, bukannya dia ideal tau, dia can continue with other works. Okay. The, the DNA controller now has to manage operation between uh, system bar, between the DMA, I.O, memory dengan juga si CPU over the system bus. Uh, okay, dia akan manage the communication between this uh, component 1, 2, 3, 4 ni over the system bus, uh, via the system bus. Okay, CPU buat kerja lain. Uh, macam tu lah. Okay, faham tak faham? First, dia akan, ni kena request. Oh, sorry, yang tadi, tadi dia dah hantar whole acknowledgement. Lepas tu dia akan hantar uh, DMA 
acknowledgement. Maksudnya, okay, now you ready to send the data via the system pass. Tapi dikontrol oleh DMA. Ha, dia kena minta dulu, kena ada handover. Ha, kena ada handover. Baru dia boleh, baru dia bertukar slab ke master ni. Okay, faham tak ini guys? Ya, DMA control tax over. How is tax over ini lah proses dia. Acknowledgement. Dia kena ada request dan acknowledgement. Macam awak nak minta barang, you, you ask first, right? Can I have your pen? I mean you request. Then your friend say, okay, that's an acknowledgement. Ha, macam tu je. Senang kan? Ha, boleh ha? Ha, ni contoh gambar modul diagram je. Sama saja data ni. Ha, ni, ni, ni guys. DMA request, interrupt, kalau dia ada interrupt handler. In how interrupt work is the same. By sensing the interrupt signal. Okay. Read and write is the control dia. Ni tadi. CPU tells DMA controller with a write. Dia kena bagi tahu controller. Okay, this is, uh, this is a needed read or write device address, which address, static address of memory block. CPU queries on with other work, they may control deal with the transfer, send interrupt and finish. They can send interrupt and finish. Okay, kepada siapa? Kepada CPU. So, yeah. Uh, so, CPU dah tak payah risau. Dia bagi information je. Okay, okay. you kena hantar dekat sini uh, what is the the command. So, the DMA will do it. Uh, maksudnya, you transfer the you transfer the responsibility to other party. Ah, Tadi CPU yang kena, kena manage but now DMA have to manage. So, CPU can do other work. So, it become more efficient. Uh, dia take over the system bus. Tapi the information it get from the CPU. Uh, faham tak? Macam driver bawa bus lah. Uh, okay, the company already told him, okay, you kena bawa student ni ke sini, ke sini, ke sini. So, dia bawa ni. Uh, macam tu. So, CPU boleh buat kerja lain. So, DMA take over the system bus. Untuk transfer the data. Tapi still the instruction is from the CPU. Okay, CPU tells DMA. Apa dia bagi tahu yang benda-benda ni. Boleh tak? Clear tak guys? Eh, faham lah? Ha? Uh, faham lah, okay. Saya rasa macam uh, Venorica, Rebecca, Patrick, siapa yang <laughs> selalu bagi komen ni. Agak bagus-bagus, okay. Senang je, uh, yang ini cycling, uh, cycle stealing, burst mode is how the... Uh, the CPU and okay, so some also to share between uh, this how you share between uh, CPU dengan apa nama bus sorry CPU dengan DMA controller because kalau you dah take over you have the control over right so remember that even though the CPU can do the other work but sometimes they need to use the system bus as well that's the means of communication between this component. So how they want to alternate the uses of the system bus, they can either use uh, cycle stealing or burst mode. Cycle stealing is to dia akan set lah berapa cycle, like berapa CPU cycle, they can hand over to DMA dan sebagainya. The burst mode is uh, the continuous checking on the uh, operation. Dia mana dia punya ni. Cycle stealing is quite simple lah. Uh, take over bus for a cycle, okay. Transfer of one word of data, no interrupt. Uh, does not switch contact. So, katakan dua cycle DMA. After that, CPU. So, dia ada, kita ada set dia punya cycle, a number of cycle. Okay. Okay, it slow down the CPU but not as much CPU doing the transfer. Okay. The alternate lah, kita, kita, kita uh, we set the cycle. Okay. Kalau the bus mode, okay, the, the bus burst mode is the DMA controller transfer block of data by halting the CPU and controlling the system for the duration of the transfer. Okay. The transfer will be as quick as the weakest link in the I.O. module. Sekejap uh, saya nak scan mana the important point dalam ni. As pass through the CPU but the CPU must still be halted while the transfer take place. Okay. It's continuously burst mode. Bila dia perlukan dia kena take over. Okay. The main control transfer block data by halting the CPU. Okay. And controlling the system bus for the duration of the transfer. When this is completed baru dia give it back to the CPU. Kalau cycle tadi kita set cycle time dia. Dua cycle bagi dekat DMA, dua cycle bagi dekat CPU. Yang ini, when the DMA I need to transfer the block of data, dia akan do the transfer until complete then they will pass back to the CPU. Okay. Katakan CPU tengah buat kerja tapi dia kena berhenti juga. So, it's set in context. 
dia will take over the system bus okay, dia akan buat semua sampai selesai dan after tu baru dia give back to the CPU faham tak beza dua tu? dua tu you set the cycle yang satu ni until the completion of the transfer of data CPU kena berhenti, berhenti buat kerja dia <coughs> Tapi kalau compare is still faster. Okay. And now is the contoh-contoh of the configuration of DMA. Ini dia punya gambaran lah guys. Okay. This is a processor. This is a processor CPU lah. DMA is a piece of hardware lah. You tap into the system bus. Ini system bus dia. Okay. Then there are module. You have uh, many other one. Okay. Ini nanti boleh tengok sendiri ya. Dia tengok gambar tu. Then analyze lah the, the, the diagram. Ada yang uh, one single DMA, ada dua DMA, contohnya ni DMA, okay. Okay, controller may support more than one device, okay. Banyak device they can support, okay. It's transfer uses bus once, DMA to the CPU is suspended once, once in one cycle. Huh? CPU is also, nanti you baca, baca betul-betul and analyze. How many is suspended? How many time? Channel, yeah. Oh, channel tak ada apa lah. Okay, uh, getting more sophisticated by open road. Ni apa? Sekejap. Untuk channel ni. Sekejap. Tak ada banyak ini to highlight from this slide. Okay, channel is uh, it's similar to the but it's more like flexible. Okay, apa lah? Gambar gambaran saja. Contoh contoh IPO controller different view. Architecture of the IPO channel. Kita eh, ada apa maksudnya? You kena baca juga maksudnya. This um, uh, maksud saya nak discuss dia banyak banyak macam it's easy to for you to read. Uh, sebab tu saya skip eh. I'm focusing on the, nah, ini sama je guys, by all interface. Okay, for example, to send data to peripheral, the sequence of event will be as follows, just to show you the, the, the steps, okay. The I.O. module send a control signal to the peripheral requesting permission to send data. Sebab kita banyak peripheral. The peripheral acknowledge the, the request, okay. Dia nak read the data from, right. The I.O. module send the data, this may be either a word at one time or block at a time depending on the peripheral because you have different format, different type of peripheral. The process of synchronization is known as handshaking. The internal buffer allows the I.O. module to compensate for some of the different of the different in the speed at which the interface can communicate. This is to highlight you the function of internal buffer. Okay, you can fill in the buffer with the data. Okay. okay. Okay, the I.O. interface can be divided into two main type, parallel interface dengan serial. Ini, ini actually dalam bentuk hardware, you can see the the cable itself. Right? Ada yang parallel, ada yang serial. Right? Parallel meaning it can uh, multiple wires that connecting to I.O. module to the peripheral. Multiple wire mean they can carry more than one bit at a time. Okay. And bits of data are transferred simultaneously. So they carry the banyak wire, so banyak data yang mengalir. You can as they are over the data bus, this type of indicate use for high speed peripherals such as this drive. Okay, mana kala serial interface is a single wire. Single wire maksudnya one bit at a time. So it's a little bit slower as compared to a parallel interface macam highway dengan jalan raya biasa. Itu je perbezaannya. This is used for slower peripherals such as printer and key keyboard. Okay, gambar lah ni, uh, gambar apa untuk device ni kayak yang kabel putih tu lah ni peripheral lah guys. Ni, contoh dia. Uh, ah, itu sahaja. Ni tak payah nak draw, sepatutnya ada homework but I don't have to. Tak ada masa nak buat presentation kan. I think we'll, uh, I think we still have more four more lecture. Tapi maybe the last two will be combined. So, three more lecture week. Because we are in week 10 already. Kita dekat week 10 sekarang ni. Eh, before I, before that, any question regarding this lecture? Tapi you get the idea kan? What is IO module function? Okay, bagus. Okay, kalau tak ada question for this uh, lecture, 
uh, I just want to explain it a bit about how our study plan. So we are in week 10 now. So we have four more weeks to go before your final exam. I'm not sure whether you have revision week. Do you have revision week, guys? Not sure again. So kita ada empat minggu, tapi there's a one week, there's a keamatan dengan gawai, right? It's a gawai week. So the, the cuti is actually on Rabu dan Kamis, kan? Is it? A gawai week nanti. Kan Rabu dengan Kamis is a hari gawai, hari gawai dayak, kan? Uh, untuk keamatan Sabah is 30, uh, 30 or 31. Dekat Sarawak tak cuti tau sebenarnya. Uh, only for Gawai is a public holiday. Uh, tapi I think we have uh, ramai tak student Sabah kat sini. Tapi you selasa. Ada, ada ramai orang Sabah tak kat sini. Ada yang celebrate keamatan? Ada. Uh, sebab kalau keamatan, maybe dibagi pelepasan kepada pelajar yang merayakan keamatan sahaja. Uh, yang tak merayakan keamatan tidak akan pelepasan lah because kita dah banyak sangat cuti on uh, Isnin. Isnin uh, because you, you guys kelas Isnin dengan Selasa kan? Uh, keamatan berapa hari guys? Dua hari ya? Eh? Let me look dekat you punya jadual sekejap. Ah, uh, 30, 31 kan? Keamatan kan? So, it's affect both. 30 dan 31. So, we cannot afford to cancel our class anymore sebab kita dah far behind because 2 minggu, uh, minggu lepas kan saya sakit suara kan? So, yang satu lecture covered by AP Johari by Asynchronous. So, kita ada 4 minggu. Okay, I will see how. Okay, kalau boleh saya tak nak cancel sebab kita dah far behind. Tapi I will look at the lecture note. If I can combine, then we can combine lah. Tapi kalau saya tak sure berapa orang ambil. Uh, sebab satu dengan dua, uh, Kamis, Rabu dengan Kamis. Kelas awal Isnin dengan Selasa. So we can do one, one more lecture. Okay, tak apalah. Just not to share for you that only those yang celebrate keamatan we get the pelepasan uh, exemption lah from uh, attending the class. Uh, tapi you guys kena email lah siapa yang keamatan tu yang lain tu kena hadir ya. Unfortunately kena hadir. Uh, sebab kalau kita dah banyak cover, kita boleh cancel the class. You don't have to come to the class. I will see how. I will see how. Okay, please check uh, ELI page and your siswa email from time to time. Okay, about our class next week. Okay. Uh, as uh, this uh, point, I haven't decided yet. Okay, I need to check the lecture note. If I, I think I can cover in three weeks, Maybe we just cancel the class. If I think we can't, then we have to do it the class. But I need to check the lecture note first, okay? Uh, your result already uh, posted yesterday for your midterm. And then please don't forget your final lab submission, okay? Must be submitted by Friday. Last uh, lab, uh, lab five. I will uh, provide the link later on. Uh, ada apa-apa soalan before we, we dismiss the class? Do you have any question, guys, regarding the lecture or anything? Banyak cuti and Isnin, banyak cuti. Okay, if you don't have any question, for those who already scan the attendant, you can leave the session. For those who haven't, please scan your attendant. Kalau tak boleh scan, uh, manual scan, you just a uh, manual scan. Manual attendant, just leave your metric number. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone. I hope you understand uh, the lecture that we have just discussed today. And please go back and read the lecture note again. Jangan tak baca nanti you lupa. And for those who celebrating gawai, happy gawai, happy keamatan. Siapa yang raya ada lagi seminggu nak raya. See you guys next week. Okay. Uh, not sure whether we have class, but please check the elite from time to time, okay? Okay, I will leave the attendance for maybe for two minutes before I close it. Uh, madam, and yeah. I have a question for uh, project task four. Uh, yeah. If we agree with the loan scheme, then we don't have to suggest another scheme, right? We just uh, have to justify. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, okay, thank you. Can we trust the, the 
the session in one minute. Are you, 